Well, thank you for being here, Elizabeth. Tell us, when did you and how did you get involved with the Andean tradition? In uh, 1988, I was studying clinical psychology at a, a psychology program in California, transpersonal psychology, and I, we became very interested in how other cultures defined mental health and mental illness. Uh, uh, my best girlfriend that we had gone to school with decided she was going to go off to Peru. But she called me up in the middle of my PhD. I think you better get down here. Elizabeth, come now. So I went on a supposed vacation to Peru, which ended up being like opening a door to my destiny. I just got literally sucked down there and then a whole wild adventure unfolded from that, which led to my 25 years of studying with the, the Inca tradition, Juan Nunez del Prado, the Quero Indians of Peru, and writing a couple books about it. And the rest is history, as they say. <laughs> So what is it that you like so much about the Andean tradition? What I love about the Andean tradition is the feeling of being completely at home in a tradition that feels natural. You know, in those days I was about 25, no, I was 28 years old when I first went to Peru. And I didn't even really know that I was looking for a spiritual tradition that felt right to me, but I, well, as soon as I found the Andean tradition, I knew, oh my God, this is it. Um, I love the happiness that it brings, the ecstatic feeling of being connected to great mother nature, the way the practices feel so organic and you get so much out of doing the simplest practices. It's not a complicated study. It's not, there's no hierarchy. There's no gurus. This is what I love most about it. Yeah, I don't have to be a guru. No teacher is a guru in the tradition. We're all colleagues learning together, you know, and I think that's beautiful. The Pacos to me are some of the most fun people in the world. There's a whole worldwide network of people that all feel attracted to this tradition and they're such interesting characters. How do you work with the Andean tradition? Well, also something I like is that it's very free. There is no kind of obligation. But I think you naturally feel a devotion. I naturally feel a devotion to Pachamama. In my place, I live on the big island of Hawaii in an organic farm. And I feel completely blessed that I get to go outside every morning and go pick fruit out of my orchard as my job, <laughs> you know. So, and then we, so actually just being in nature and celebrating nature, I think the simplest things, like when you breathe out, really realizing that you're offering something that's a gift to the plants and the trees. And when you breathe in, you're breathing in not only oxygen that the trees and plants made for us, but their finest energy, their sami. And so to be able to live in that, so simple, just thinking, ah, oh, I love you plants. Ah, oh, I'm, I'm drinking in your love, I'm giving it back to you, you know. To live in this kind of feeling of I need, the sacred reciprocity of the, the only rule of the tradition, yeah. Um, it's just so nice. It's simple, it's beautiful, and it's easy to practice. There's no hard, demanding part about it. You know, whenever we travel, we make an offering to uh, nature so mm -hmm. that our trip goes well. <laughs>